Welcome to Nomenclature of cycle, Cycloalkanes, Alkyl Substituents, and Alkyl Halides. This is from uh, sections 3.3 and 3.4. And uh, let's take a look first at cycloalkanes. This slide just kind of giving us some examples of these cyclic alkanes. Notice they are in a cyclic form. Skeletal structures do not show carbons and hydrogens bonded to the carbons. Uh, as you can see down here, uh, there are no hydrogens shown, but this is a three carbon cyclic structure. This one, cyclobutane, four carbons, one at each of these intersections of the lines. We've also called these bond line drawings. Of course, this is for the cyclic structure. Cyclopentane, cyclohexane are shown on this slide. Let's look at the next slide. Here is uh, skeletal structures that you, uh, you're you pretty familiar with um, that uh, we've been looking at recently. And of course, here's uh, butane, one, two, three, four. We could number it the other way, too, one, two, three, four. Each one of these, end of each line is a carbon and so forth. Here's 2-methylhexane, where we have a methyl group off of number two of this six-carbon chain. And this one is a little uh, more uh, substituents. We got a methyl group off of one, two, number three. And a, on this one, we got a one, two, three, or propyl group off of number four. And the longest chain is heptane, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven chain. And of course, here you can see six ethyl, two, three, dimethyl, nonane. Notice that ethyl comes first and methyl second, even though it's dimethyl, the di is not accounted for, it's ignored when alphabetizing. And again, here's some uh, additional skeletal structures. Pent pentylamine, sec butyl alcohol, isopentyl bromide. Notice these are skeletal, but other than carbon and hydrogen, we show these atoms because otherwise we wouldn't know what they are. We know that these are carbons with hydrogens but they're not shown, but NH2, we have to show the nitrogen and the two hydrogens on this amine group. And we got five carbons, one, two, three, four, five. So pentyl, notice we put a YL at the end, butyl, but there's one, two, three, four, but the OH is off of one of the secondary carbons, so we call it sec butyl. If it was off this secondary carbon right here, would have the same exact structure. You could visualize this. You could turn this around, and you'd have the OH off of this one if you turn the whole molecule around. So it's really the same. So we call it sec butyl alcohol. Here's isopentyl. Notice the iso structure at the end of the molecule. And we've got five carbons, one, two, three, four, five. We've got iso, so we call it isopentyl. And bromide is on one end of the molecule. Here's a monosubstituted examples of cycloalkanes. In this case, a number is not needed. Monosubstituted means it's just one substituent. And this one here is a methyl group. Here is a ethyl group. And this one here is a one, two, three, four, five carbon substituent that is a, um, that actually since it's five carbons, and this one is only four, this cyclobutane is only four, we actually name it using the longest chain as the last name, so to speak, of the molecule. And then we name the cyclobutyl as the substituent off of the pentane. Notice we say one cyclobutyl pentane. We tell where the cyclobutyl structure is. It's off the number one carbon, because that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Actually, it's one, two, three, four, five. Or we could call it one, it's actually one, two, three, four, five. This is the number one carbon that's bonded to this cyclobutane, that we now call cyclobutyl. The number's not needed because we assume it's number one, in these cases, over here, this cyclobutyl could be off of number two, that one right there, or number three, or number four. So here's a dye substituted cycloalkane. Substituents are stated in alphabetical order, which is no surprise. 
number one goes to the first listed substituent. So whichever one is an alphabetized number one, you know, comes first, methyl before propyl, we're going to put number one where the methyl group is and then number it so we get the next lowest number on the other substituent. So that's one, that's two. We wouldn't go one, two, three, four, five. We'd number one and then go to the right to have that as number two. One, two, three, a propyl group. So it's one methyl, two propyl, cyclo, pentane. And here's another example. There are two methyl groups off of this cyclohexane. That's a methyl group and a methyl group. So we have dimethyl. One of these is number one. So if that's one, then this is going to be three. If this is one, then this would be three. And there's really no difference. So we call it one, three dimethyl cyclohexane. Two substituents with the same low number. If more than one name has the same low number, choose the name with the next lowest number. Here's some examples. 112 trimethylcyclopentane. Here's cyclopentane, five carbon ring. And we notice we got three methyl groups, one here and two off of this carbon. So we're going to name it so we get the, the most number of low numbers as possible. So we'll call that number one because it's got two substituents. So, so we call it 1, 1. This must be 2 to get the next lowest number. So 1, 1, 2, tri, methyl, and then cyclopentane. And again, here, we've got three substituents, and we want to get the lowest possible numbers as we can. Of course, it's going to have to be listed ethyl, methyl, propyl, E, M, P, ethyl, this one, methyl, propyl, in that alphabetized order. And we're going to put the a combination of numbers that will end up to be the lowest. One, two, four turns out to be better than one, three, four, which turns out to be better than one, two, five. So we're going to number the ethyl, we're going to number the propyl group number one, so that now the methyl group is number two, and then the ethyl group is number four. Okay, so it's just a matter of trying to get the lowest numbers. Here's uh, a few things we've already kind of mentioned, but no number is needed for a single substituent on a ring, as you can see illustrated here. Um, name the two substituents in alphabetical order. We've seen that principle a number of times. If there are more than two substituents, they are cited in alphabetical order, and these are examples in trying to get the lowest numbers. Now, let's shift gears and let's look at alkyl substituents. Removing a hydrogen from an alkane results in an alkyl substituent. We see these very commonly. Here's a methyl group. It was a methane, CH4. It loses a proton. Now we call it methyl. And it's gonna, this bond right here is between that carbon and some other carbon. Another, it's a branch, as we've seen methyl groups being branches. Notice the line's drawn right there to the right. That doesn't mean it's from one of those hydrogens, because the three hydrogens are bonded to the carbon. It's from the carbon. That bond of this ethyl group is from that carbon, not one of the hydrogens, and so forth. Propyl group, butyl group. It's just that by convention, we write it this way, showing the hydrogens attached to the carbon. And the line indicates, again, a bond from that carbon, the nearest carbon, to another carbon, most likely. Two carbons, so it becomes ethyl. Propane, propyl, butyl, pentyl, and often we'll just say an R group. R can be any alkyl group. It could be a methyl, it could be an ethyl, propyl, butyl, pentyl, pentyl, and so forth. It could be any length, number of carbons. Here's methyl in the ball and stick model. Methyl chloride, there's a methyl group. Methylamine, here's an amine group. There's the methyl group. Again, A and E of alkane is changed to YL. A little bit on common names. Um, this is the general formula for an alcohol. Any alkyl group bonded with an OH is an alcohol, methyl alcohol. An amine has an amine group on an alkyl group. Here's ethyl amine, ethyl, and that's the amine group. An alkyl halide that we're going to get to in a minute. X is referring to a halogen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, or iodine, bonded to an alkyl group like propyl bromide. And an ether has a structure of an oxygen between two R groups, or two, between two um, alkyl groups. And an example is right down here, ethyl-methyl, ether. Here's the methyl, here's the ethyl. 
and we name it that way, ethyl methyl. This is a common name, but very easy to name. Here's propylamine. It's an amine that has a three carbon that was propane, lost a hydrogen, bonded to the immune group, it becomes propylamine. Ethyl alcohol, the most commonly in uh, alcohol that humans are exposed to from ingestion, ethyl alcohol, methyl iodide. Here's propyl and isopropyl uh, structures. We're familiar with isopropyl, um, the structure right here. We're going to see in a minute there's two different ways we can draw this, but that's a branch, even though it's with the chloride. So, But we do call it isopropyl chloride. And here's an isopropyl group. Notice this is a secondary carbon with two methyl groups on either side. This is a straight chain propyl group, so we just call it propyl group. This one is isopropyl because it's going to have a it's going to have a bond right here, which causes a branching, as you can see, in isopropyl chloride. Propyl chloride would be like this. Obviously, if this carbon were bonded to that, if this chloride was bonded to that carbon, it would be propyl chloride. If it were bonded to that carbon, it would be propyl chloride. But if it's bonded to the one in the middle, then it's isopropyl chloride because we now have a branch-like structure. Here's propane. Again, removing a hydrogen, it becomes a propyl group. So there's two ways to draw isopropyl chloride. You can see here, the structure right here, there's a branch strictly speaking, an ISO structure, and also in this case where we've got an ISO type structure where now chlorine is actually off of the middle carbon, it's off the middle one here too. And actually this is the same as this. Notice here, these are three carbons, chloride, three carbons, one off the middle, the same number of hydrogen, so forth. So it's actually the same molecule, but we can draw it, and it looks a little different, but it's actually the same. There are four butyl groups. Here's a butyl. The butane's lost a hydrogen, an isobutyl, branching. Sec butyl, notice it's off of this secondary carbon. It's only bonded, this carbon's bonded to two other carbons, so we call it secondary. Here's a tert butyl because now we've got the arrangement where this particular carbon is bonded to three other carbons, so it becomes tert. Butyl, sec butyl. This one's bonded to two other carbons. That carbon is going to make a bond with something. And this one is an isobutyl, again, because it's branching. This is a butyl group, straight chain butyl group. Sometimes you'll see the letter N, little n, an unbranched chain, meaning it's a straight chain. Often I'll call it straight chain, but we could say N butyl bromide or unbranched chain. Here's a pentyl fluoride or N pentyl fluoride. Common names sometimes use in to in indicate a straight chain alkane. Also, we've mentioned this, I think, in the past, identifying these carbons. A carbon that's bonded to only one other carbon is a primary carbon. Hydrogens bonded to that primary carbon are known as primary hydrogens, and so forth. Here's a secondary carbon. It's bonded to two other carbons. Tertiary carbon is bonded to three carbons, and a hydrogen bonded to a tertiary carbon is a tertiary hydrogen as is summarized here on the slide. Sec penyl is not <clears throat> a good name, and the reason is both alkyl halides have five carbon atoms with a chlorine attached to a secondary carbon, but two compounds cannot be named sec butyl chloride. This is a different compound than this one, and each one of these three carbons is a secondary carbon, and we could strictly speaking call it sec penyl. But that's not a good name because a name must specify only one compound. So we don't do that with sec. Also, tert can be used with butyl and pentyl. As you can see here, tert butyl bromide and tert pentyl bromide. And again, we've seen the ISO structure illustrated before. And here's a table that kind of gives us a few um, alkyl groups, as we've talked before, and, and different structures that they can take on. And I did mention primary, secondary, and tertiary carbons. So we can define a primary alkyl halide where the halide is bonded to that particular type of carbon, as you can see on this slide. Again, there are common and systematic names for alkyl halides. And the nomenclature is really very much the same, as you can see. 
And the last couple of slides is just, uh, just a review, again, of the different kinds of alkyl halides. Here's a primary, secondary, tertiary alkyl halide based on the carbon that the bromine is bonded to. Okay, I think we'll stop right there.